Hello, welcome to CS with Terry. Today we are going to introduce the binary exponentiation algorithm, which solves the following problem: how to calculate a to the power of n efficiently, where n is a positive integer. You might think this problem is easy when you first see it. We can simply repeatedly multiply a for n times. However, this is a naive approach, and its time complexity is O n. When n is equal to 100 million, we would need 100 million iterations to get the answer. On the other hand, with the binary exponentiation algorithm we are going to introduce today, we can calculate the answer with only 27 iterations. Let's look at a special case. When n is a power of two, is there a way to solve the problem efficiently? For example, when n equals 64, we can first calculate a squared as a times a, then calculate a to the power of 4 with a squared times a squared. We can calculate a to the power of 8, to the power of 16, and so on in the same way until we get a to the power of 64. This way, we only need six multiplications to calculate a to the power of 64. In other words, the time complexity is reduced to O log n. The key to this algorithm is doubling. Instead of multiplying by one a at a time, we double the number of a's in each iteration. Now let's look at a general case. When n is not a power of two, what should we do? For example, when n is equal to one o five. We can see that even though 105 is not a power of two, we can write it as the sum of powers of two. In this case, 105 is equal to one plus eight plus 32 plus 64. So we can write a to the power of 105 as a to the power of one plus eight plus 32 plus 64, which is equivalent to a times a to the power of eight times a to the power of 32. Times a to the power of 64. As we just demonstrated, calculating a to the power of 8, a to the power of 32, and a to the power of 64 is easy, and we just need to multiply them together. The key to this algorithm is how to write n as the sum of powers of 2. Let's take a look at the binary form of those numbers. There are four ones in the binary form of 105. On the other hand, there is only one one in the binary form of 1, 8, 32, and 64. We only need to break up the four ones in 105 to get the other four numbers. This is how we can decompose n as the sum of powers of two. Combining what we have introduced. We can get the pseudo codes of the binary exponentiation algorithm. Let's go through the code by calculating seven of the power of 105 as an example. Let's first look at the code in blue. When n is not equal to zero, the algorithm goes into the loop. At the end of each iteration, we divide n by two and then take its floor. We can observe how n changes. In the first iteration, n is equal to 105, or 1101001 in binary. In each following iterations, we divide n by two and take its floor, which is equivalent to removing the last digit in its binary. The algorithm exits the loop when n is equal to zero. Now let's look at the code in red. At the end of each iteration. A becomes a squared. Let's observe how it changes. At the beginning, a is equal to seven. In the first iteration, a is seven to the power of one. In the following iterations, a becomes seven to the power of two, to the power of four, to the power of eight, and so on, until finally it becomes seven to the power of sixty-four. Finally, let's look at the code in yellow. Firstly, we initialize r as one. Then we will examine whether the remainder of n divided by two is one. In other words, 
we examine whether the last digit of binary n is 1. If so, we will multiply r by a. The final result of r would be 7 to the power of 1 times 7 to the power of 8 times 7 to the power of 32 times 7 to the power of 64, which is equal to 7 to the power of 105. Now we can summarize the binary exponentiation algorithm. We examine each digit of n in binary, starting from the last digit. If we find a digit equal to 1, we will multiply r by a. In this case, a happens to be 7 to the power of 1, 8, 32, and 64. In the end, we can get 7 to the power of 105 correctly. Side note, these two calculations can be replaced by bitwise operations. Calculating the remainder of n divided by 2 is equivalent to calculating bitwise end of the two numbers. Calculating the floor of n divided by 2 is equivalent to right shift n by 1 bit. The time complexity of the binary exponentiation algorithm is O log n, because the number of iterations is equal to the number of bits in binary n. If n is an integer, the number of bits in its binary form is 1 plus the floor of log n. Here we assume the time complexity of each multiplication is O1. Now that we understand the basic algorithm, let's look at a few applications. The first application is how to calculate a to the power of n, then mod m. a, n, and m are positive integers. This operation is called modular exponentiation. Let's first look at the naive algorithm in which there are n iterations. In each iteration, we will multiply the result by a and then mod m. Side note, the mod operation is distributive. In other words, a times b mod m equals a mod m times b mod m, then mod m again. Now let's see how to use the binary exponentiation algorithm to calculate modular exponentiation. With slight modification to the original algorithm, by adding the mod operation in appropriate places, we can successfully transform the binary exponentiation algorithm into the fast modular exponentiation algorithm. Here we compare the performance of the naive algorithm and the fast modular exponentiation algorithm. On the left is the Python implementation of the naive algorithm, and on the right is that of the fast algorithm. We will calculate 13 to the power of 100 million, then mod 10,007. Let's start the programs. Both the programs finished running. We can see both programs calculated the correct answer, which is 7,672. But the naive algorithm took 12.6 seconds, while the fast modular exponentiation algorithm only took 36 microseconds. You might ask, why do we need to calculate modular exponentiation? Actually, it is widely used in cryptography and number theory. For example, modular exponentiation is one of the key operations in RSA encryption. In the future, we will publish videos to introduce more about cryptography and number theory. The second application of binary exponentiation is calculating the nth number in the Fibonacci sequence. Let's first understand what the Fibonacci sequence is. It looks like this. So, what kind of properties does this sequence have? We can see that the sequence starts with 0 and 1, and all other Fibonacci numbers are equal to the sum of the two preceding numbers. You might be surprised that the Fibonacci sequence has anything to do with binary exponentiation. Let me explain. Let's first check out how to use matrices to represent the Fibonacci sequence. 
We will use a column vector to represent the n plus 1s and the n's Fibonacci numbers. We will see that it is equal to the matrix 1, 1, 1, 0, multiplying the column vector fn, fn minus 1, which in turn equals the matrix 1, 1, 1, 0, multiplying the column vector fn minus 1, fn minus 2. We can continue doing this until at least we see that it is equal to the matrix 1, 1, 1, 0 to the power of n, multiplying the column vector f1, f0. Since f1 and f0 are known, we only need to calculate the matrix to the power of n to get the n's Fibonacci number. Can we use the binary exponentiation algorithm to calculate the n's power of a matrix? Of course. Here is the binary exponentiation algorithm for matrices. We can see it is basically the same as the algorithm for numbers. The only difference being that we need to initialize R to be the identity matrix I. So, by applying the binary exponentiation algorithm to the matrix 1, 1, 1, 0, we can quickly calculate the n's Fibonacci number. Now let's calculate the 1 millionth Fibonacci number in Python. This is the fast matrix exponentiation in Python. Let's run it. It has finished running. Looks like a huge number. The number has 200,000 digits. The Fibonacci sequence has a lot of amazing properties. We will dedicate a video to it in the future. Now let's look at the third application. How to apply a linear transformation n times. Here we have a geometric shape made up of points in the 3D space. We first rotate the point 60 degrees counterclockwise with respect to the x-axis. Then rotate the point 30 degrees counterclockwise with respect to the y-axis. We can combine the two rotations into one linear transformation. We'd like to apply the linear transformation n times. Is there a way to calculate the transformations quickly? We can do this. Rotating the points 60 degrees counterclockwise with respect to x-axis is equivalent to multiplying the points by this matrix on the left. And rotating the points 30 degrees counterclockwise with respect to the y-axis is equivalent to multiplying the points by this matrix on the left. We can multiply the two matrices to get the linear transformation matrix. Repeating the transformation n times is the same as multiplying this matrix n times, which is the same as calculating the nth power of this matrix. As we just demonstrated, we can use the binary exponentiation algorithm to calculate the nth power of matrices. Thus, we have solved this problem. This is all we will talk about binary exponentiation. Before the video ends, I will leave you a problem to think about. Given a sequence and a permutation, how to repeat the permutation n times? I will explain the problem with an example. Here we have a sequence with six elements. We have a permutation that looks like this. We move element 1 to position 2, element 2 to position 6, and so on. This is one permutation. With the same procedure, we can finish the second permutation. What would the sequence look like if we repeat this permutation n times? You can think about how to solve this problem with binary exponentiation. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please press the like button, subscribe to our channel, and leave your comments below. See you next time.